Hello again. It's strange how easily we've become used to something which 10 years ago would have been viewed as unthinkable. I refer, of course, to the fact that the European conflict involving trench war had been dragging on for almost two years with no end in sight. A few years ago, the news that some country was bombing Moscow would have had us fainting with shock. But when it happened last year, we took it quite easily in our stride. It's just the sort of thing you expect to see these days, drones exploding over Moscow. In fact, most of us don't even think about the war in Ukraine anymore because our attention is now focused on the Middle East. In other words, two bitter wars are being waged now and this has become the new normal for us. The fact that the Yemenis have joined in this particular war, firing missiles at Israel and are now attacking shipping in the Red Sea, has not really registered on the radar for most people in Europe, but it will when the price of food and oil starts to rise as ships avoid the shortcut of the Suez Canal and start going a long way around Africa. Much of this, the attacks on Ukraine, the war in Gaza and the attacks on Western shipping are tied up with one country, which is, of course, Iran. Iran, which is a Shiite theocracy, hopes to topple Sunni Saudi Arabia and become the centre of gravity for the Muslim world. Since more than 80% of Muslims regard the Shiites as, to say the least of it, unorthodox in their religion, this is not likely to be a smooth process. I can't see the Arabs giving up their supremacy that easily to a bunch of Farsi heretics. It is, of course, for this reason that Iran is refining uranium so that they can construct a nuclear bomb. This, I imagine, will make them invincible. They've achieved a great deal without a nuclear weapon and a missile system to deliver it, but just think how that would alter the geopolitical balance, not only in the Middle East, but across the whole world. So far, the Iranians have been able to supply Russia with weaponry, which is being used to strike Kiev. They've used Hamas to attack Israel. And, of course, they're financing the Yemenis, who are blockading the Bab al-Mandab and closing access to the Red, Red Sea. How much more powerful will it be when they actually have a nuclear weapon? The problem is, of course, that Israel will not let this happen and they will cheerfully attack Iran to prevent such a thing. The Americans won't allow Iran to acquire such weapons either and the British are now ready to make a joint statement with the Americans warning Iran that if more ships are attacked then we will consider going to war. This move is coming just as Israel is preparing to fight on its northern border against Hezbollah, which is a proxy for Iran and is indistinguishable, really, from the Iran Revolutionary Guards. Today, a huge bomb exploded in Iran, which killed almost 100 people, and coming so soon after the Israeli drone attack in Beirut, Iran will be forced into some dramatic action to save face. It's unthinkable that they would let these things pass unremarked. Whatever they decide to do might well give Britain and America the excuse to strike. If that happens, then we will really see some fireworks. This coming year may be the time when people wake up and realise that they are actually living through World War III.